Hey guys, what's up? It's Adrian. Welcome back. I hope you're doing great. So today we are finally making my iconic, there I say, fruitcake. Let's get into it. In mixer, I have two cups of granulated sugar and one stick of butter. So what you're going to do, you're going to place it on your stand mixer, fit it with a paddle attachment. You can do this with a hand mixer, but it's going to take really long because you will see why shortly. So you start your mixer on stir and then you crank it all the way up to a medium speed until your butter and sugar is fully combined and light and fluffy. Sugar is light and fluffy, it doubles in volume. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna add our room temperature eggs. So I have four eggs here. You're gonna add them one at a time. I added two at a time because one of my yolks broke. So the reason for having room temperature eggs is that you don't want your batter to break. You want everything to be one temperature. If you, again, your eggs are not at room temperature, you can warm some water up place that warm water in a bowl and place your eggs in it, not extremely boiling water because you don't want to cook your eggs, but that should bring your eggs up to room temperature within five to eight minutes. So add your eggs in one at a time and beat that until it's fully incorporated and you can't see any egg left. And then you repeat, you repeat until all your eggs have been combined. So before you add your eggs, what I recommend you doing is preheat your oven at 350 degrees. That way, when you are finished combining everything, your oven is perfectly ready. Butter and sugar and eggs are fully combined. You could see everything is a very light, pale yellow texture. So let me just give you guys a close up. So this is what it looks like. Let me give it a tilt. That's, that is what it look like. looks like. I, I don't know. I, I can't speak again, guys. So now we're going to move on to adding our nutmeg baking powder and cinnamon with a dash of salt the reason for adding the salt is that it enhances the flavor and also things are not going to be extremely sweet once i do that i am then going to add my flour now if you're looking at me you're saying adrian so why you're not measuring anything i am not measuring my flour so this is my measuring cup here well it's not even but let me give it a shake this is my measuring cup here and i'm just going to add the flour just like that what I do is that I use the cup, I lift the flour, and I drop it back down into the container, and that way it's lighter than how it's packaged. So, one, two, and three. And that's about it. So, once you add your flour, you're going to give everything a mix, and you're saying, well, why did I add all my flour first? Now, I'm adding all my flour so that everything can, can be combined, and it's not lumpy. You will say, but wait, we are going to get too much gluten development. That's actually not true. So I'm going to give this a mix and give you guys a close up on what it looks like because you can't over mix, but in this instance, it is just okay to add everything at once in terms of flour, that is. So lift my mixer up and I'm going to start on a very low speed until everything is fully combined. One thing guys that I did not mention earlier, please scrape the bottom and side of your bowl each time you start and stop your mixer. Reason being for that is that you want everything to combine evenly. It just makes things a whole lot easier in the long run because if you don't do that, at the ending, when you are pouring your batter out to bake, you're going to see at the bottom nothing was combined. So with that being said, I am now going to add the rest of my ingredients in terms of wet so i'm gonna add a dash of bitters you can omit this but i just think it tastes really great again i'm gonna add vanilla essence remember this is something that we use in trinidad for cakes pastries that sort of thing it just i don't know it, it just works it just works um add vanilla extract i am not adding vanilla extract because i want the fruit to actually be the star of the show so now that i've added this I'm just going to give it a stir for it to be combined and then we're going to add our fruit and add our browning and that's it. Time, my vanilla essence, bitters and everything else is basically combined. What we're going to do now, we're going to add our fruits 
that we made if you haven't seen that video yet it's going to be linked in the description below i showed you guys how i make my christmas fruits what special ingredients i add there because it's not your typical soaked fruit for this fruit cake we're doing the best so i have my fruits measured out here let me give you guys a close-up because it looks awesome um yeah so i'm gonna pour all of this inside of here and I'm gonna leave just a little bit because I mean, I'm gonna fold that in at the end. You don't have to do that step. You can just pour everything in now. So another thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna measure my browning for my fruitcake. Um, this is flour that is from this. I just didn't wash it because whatever. So I'm gonna crank this up here and I'm gonna start this in a very slow speed on stir and I'm gonna pour my browning in. So you're gonna ask me, Adrian, what is browning? So browning is something that we use for fruit cakes for to get its really rich and beautiful dark brown color. Our fruit cake that we're making is gonna have a brown and red hue from our amazing fruits that we added so much cherry brandy in and our secret ingredient dried cranberries so browning is basically sugar um for example if you're from Trinidad and you're making stewed chicken you know you burn your brown sugar at the bottom of your pot and then you add a chicken and so forth so it's something like that but if you don't know what that is browning is basically burnt brown sugar you can make this at home but I think it could go so wrong if you do that if you don't know what you're doing so I just purchased my browning from the store so you add your browning in, you add your fruits in, and we're going to stir everything together until it's fully combined. Our fruit cake is fully combined and <laughs> it, it looks fantastic. It smells great. Again, please, please, please scrape the sides and the bottom of your bowl. It looks honestly fantastic. It's a beautiful beautiful bronzy gold brown color it just looks round of applause to me round of applause for you for doing such a great job so what you're gonna do um this should make two nine inch cakes i prefer a thicker fruit cake i don't like thin slices of fruit cake i prefer a thicker cake so two nine inch cakes be sure to butter and flour your pans i've showed you how to do this many times before if you don't know i'm sure it's in one of my other baking videos check it out so what you're going to do you can take a measuring cup and pour it into your baking pans and put them in the oven that is already preheated this is going to take a lot of time to bake please don't rush it this is not a cake that is going to raise a lot because again i prefer a dense fruit cake as well so this 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 should bake for approximately two and a half hours i know that's a lot of time but you don't want it to burn because remember we added browning into this and that is already bitter and dark so you don't want it to burn you want something that comes out extremely delicious and fragrant so low and slow is the name of the game for this fruit cake and basically all fruitcake recipes that you would find anywhere, especially a Trini black cake. So we are going to add this, well, I am going to add this to my baking pans now. I'm gonna place them into the oven and I'll show you the final product. Uh, out of the oven, my kitchen smells like Christmas. It smells perfect. It, it just screams perfection. It screams everything great it's, it just screams the holiday season so my fruit cakes are out of the oven they are piping hot i use foil pans because you know what you can just throw them away afterwards and they have lids so that's a tip if you just don't want to dirty any more dishes so as soon as your fruit cakes are out of the oven you are then going to top it with more cherry brandy now you're gonna say but it's hot yes yes it's hot but the cake is most is the most tender when it's at this temperature so you are then going to soak it as soon as it comes out of the oven 
you can soak it with white rum and cherry brandy the same mixture that you would have used to soak your fruits that video will be linked in the description below again if you haven't seen it yet so i use cherry brandy only but as i said you can use the white rum and cherry brandy mixture so once you do that you are then going to leave your fruit cakes to become cold because you know what you can't have hot fruit cake and furthermore don't cut your cake when it's hot allow it to cool for around i would say eight hours i know that's a long time to wait guys but you gotta do what you gotta do because you know what it's gonna be worth it in the end so that's about it um, i'm gonna show you a few close-up shots and i'm gonna show you what a slice looks like and then i'm gonna taste <music> close up of my fruit cake it's rich it's dense but not too dense you can still see that it's cakey you can see the fruit peeking through you can see the beautiful golden brown so let's taste wow the fruit wow it's not too rummy, but it's burning your throat. I hate fruit cake like that. You actually get the flavor. The cake texture itself is excellent. It's not pudding. It's not mush. It's just that perfect consistency. The fruit really is the star of the show. You are definitely going to love this if you make this for your family. That's it for today, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. You're awesome for doing that. A few of my favorites will be linked in the description below. Check them out. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas.